If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and give our great God great glory. Now that's something you don't see every day at a political convention. About a month or so ago, Donald Trump showed up at a predominantly black church in Detroit. Now, me personally, I don't think that it's good for churches to bring in politicians, Democrat or Republican. I think that's kind of uh, a, a bit too far because it ends up being a promotional spot using the church to bring in some sort of political vote. But there is some good that did come out of it. And I don't know how you guys might feel about this, but let's just be honest. If you had the opportunity to host a president at your church, if that was going to be the case, what would you do? And if the president that you're hosting, if he asked for prayer, would you bring him in? Now, I didn't see the whole thing, so I can't really speak to whatever happened at that church. Was it more of a political rally or was it more about praying and preaching the gospel? I do know that Donald Trump spoke and I'm not sure if it, I, actually I know it was not the, you know a resounding um, spirit led sermon. But that being the case, something that he mentioned tonight was that this guy, uh, Pastor Lorenzo uh, Sewell, uh, that he mentioned that Donald Trump came and asked for prayer. I guess it was on his birthday and he spent it in the hood. Now, obviously, this is a campaign season, so it's not as though that Donald Trump came just because. You know what? Let me just, had it not been a political season, would Donald Trump have been at that church? No, I'm pretty sure he would not. But they invite him to uh, to give a speech tonight. He didn't give a speech. He gave a sermon. Now, what there are some parts in it that I would have probably left out the political parts. Yeah, but also I have to give the, the party, the campaign kudos because I'm pretty sure you're not going to get very many sermons at one of the Democratic National Convention. Uh, and truth be told, you won't get that really. I can't recall ever hearing that at any other RNC uh, convention. And so what this brother did, I thought he said a lot of good points and he was not shy about giving the gospel. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine President Donald Trump coming to a city and calling a pastor like me, a pastor who was born and raised on the east side of Detroit? I was mentored by murderers. I was a student of the street, but I had a radical experience with Jesus Christ that changed my life forever. Come on, if you believe that Jesus still changed lives, come on, put your hands together and give our great God great glory. <laughs> President Trump came to a church that is in a democratic stronghold. He came to a church to listen to average, everyday Americans like you and like me. He came to a church not to speak to us, but to listen to us. He came into a church and a lot of people, they were upset. A lot of people, they would ask me questions. Why would you allow Donald Trump to come into your church? How many know that the Bible says we are all sinners and we all need the grace of God? How many know that the Bible says he who has not sinned, let him cast the first stone? What would you ask for your birthday? If you could go to Mar-a-Lago or if you could go to New York, what would you ask for your birthday? He asked for prayer. I believe that prayer is preventative and prayer is proactive. I believe that praying in the name of Jesus changes everything. And when we prayed for President Trump, only God knew that 30 days later, there would be a miracle by a millimeter. Only God knew that if we prayed for him during his birthday, there would be a miracle by a millimeter. The question is, do you think that God was involved in what happened with Trump? Now, let's just be clear. He has had a uh, a pretty interesting time to he's up in the polls by by most accounts. Um, things aren't looking good for the other for the other candidate. And then for this to happen, uh, does that obviously something like that will, will shake you a little bit or a lot? 
and cause you to do some soul search and so forth. And so now I've say, stated this and I don't sure I'm not sure if anything has changed that I don't think that Trump's a, a, a Christian. At least he wasn't. And I don't know if he is or is not. I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, hopefully, prayerfully, he has changed uh, and that he was able to see because sometimes you get an opportunity to kind of have your life, you know, flash before you and then make some changes and then just kind of look deep. Uh, and he brings up a point about what happened or what would not have happened had they not prayed for him, because we all as believers, we believe that prayer does change things. Prayer uh, is pretty powerful. Prayer is pretty important. And so they prayed for him. We don't we didn't know, but God did. 30 days later, him being shot, did that have anything to do with anything? Remember, Donald Trump just turns his head a little bit and it wasn't just a turn. He leaned forward and it was that just enough at the split second that he just he misses getting hit in the head and it clips the top part of his ear. Was that God? Well, absolutely. Obviously, because God is the one who gives life. God is the one who takes life. God did not take his life. God could have. And so uh, bringing in God through prayer is that was that uh, what saved Trump? Would that have saved Trump? Would he have been saved? Would he have been missed no matter what? Before I take my seat, I just got to talk to you about something called providence and something called sovereignty. God's sovereignty is his ability to be able to do what he wants when he wants because he's God. And God's providence, it's when he does what he wants, when he wants for all of you. To all my friends back in Detroit who are Democrats, I want to ask you just one simple question. You can't deny the power of God on this man's life. You can't deny that God protected him. You cannot deny that it was a millimeter miracle that was able to save this man's life. Could it be that Jesus Christ preserved him for such a time as this? Could it be? Again, I'm not one for trying to mix politics and the church unless the, unless the church that's being introduced to the politics is about introducing the people to Jesus. Oftentimes you don't get that opportunity. And so when they invite you, you take full advantage of it. You said he said what he said about the political things. I can take it or leave it. But, but you expect that. But you did not expect him to actually give the gospel to lead people. Somebody might hear this who might be concerned, who might think, what does all this mean? And try to make some sense of things. Or they might just be going through some other things and just happen to be watching. And then they hear Jesus. And that might be what the Lord uses to prick that person's heart. I have no idea. But anytime that you get an opportunity to preach Jesus and in, in any venue, I say do it. As a matter of fact, Paul kind of gave us that example going amongst people. Remember, Paul goes before the people and he sees this, this inscription, this inscription uh, at this with this statute. He says, uh, he says, for a while, this is Acts 17, 23 says, for a while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship. I also found an altar with this is with this inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. And so what does he do? He gives them the gospel. He gives the gospel to pagans who were not expecting that. Pagans who this altar, this inscription was just made for some guy they had no idea. But Paul says, let me tell you about the guy that you don't know. And I thought it was awesome to hear this young brother who I, I think he's had some issues, had some past. Uh, I think I think someone said that he may have been in prison, getting the opportunity to go before millions of people because people are tuning in tonight to hear Donald Trump speak. And he gets the opportunity to speak. And what does he do? He lets them know about Jesus, the goodness of the Lord. Could it be that when we prayed for him, when he came to the round table in Detroit, that Jesus asked and he received, that we sought him and then he found protection. Could it be that the King of glory, the Lord God strong and mighty, the God who is mighty in battle protected Donald Trump because he wants to use him for such a time as this. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and give our great God great glory. So to come and speak about the providence and the sovereignty of the Lord, amen, 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 and amen some more. Now, some folks are going to turn their nose up. That's fine. I get that because, yeah, it's, it's disingenuous. Who is this guy showing up at this political rally to preach about Jesus? Well, if you invite me anywhere, I told someone that if you invited me to a, a gay wedding, I'm going 
because I'm going to tell them what I'm going for. I'm going to preach the gospel. So they invited me at one point in time to uh, a Savior's Day event for the Nation of Islam. You sure you want me to come? Sure, Brother Corey, want you to show up. I went up, I went there, and now they didn't invite me back. But what did I preach to them? Not about Farrakhan or about Islam. No, I told them that unless they place their faith in Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, who is God in flesh, unless they do that, well, they they will not see heaven. Needless to say, they were upset, but still, I am going, if you invite, invite me, you're going to get what's in me. And so I appreciate the young man doing that. But I would say this, I would caution anyone that is totally against it. Obviously, there's some things that you probably might not like. I get that. But if you're going to be totally against it, we got a problem. Don't be like Agrippa. You remember Agrippa, who when Paul is preaching to him, Paul gets an opportunity to go before King Agrippa. And what was Agrippa's response? In Acts 26, 28, Agrippa replied to Paul, in a short time, you will persuade me to become a Christian. And some versions might say, you almost persuaded me. Are you thinking you're going to persuade me to become a Christian? And Paul said, I would wish to God that whether in a short or a long time, not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Be just like me, not obviously in these chains, but to have an opportunity to present the gospel to you, Agrippa, I want you to be saved. I want you to come to Christ. Or to you, Donald Trump, I want you to be saved. Or to you, Biden, or anyone at the DNC or the RNC or anyone else that's listening, I want you to be saved. Yes, I am trying to persuade you. And if you don't acquiesce to what I'm saying, that's fine. But you heard the gospel. Now, in our society, people tell you, you don't need to be preaching that. Keep se keep separate church and state. Says who? Says man. Now, it reminds me of, again, back to Acts, Acts 5. As a matter of fact, one of the shirts that you'll see me wearing, it says, whatever God says, that comes from Acts 5, 29. Prior to that, they were warned, they were beaten and warned uh, not to speak about Jesus. And so picking up in verse 27, when they had brought them, they stood them before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, we gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in his name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than men. So whatever God said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do what he tells us to do. And if we get the opportunity to come out and preach before the people in the streets, amen. If we get the opportunity to go in before the RNC or the DNC, I would say this for anyone that's bothered who is now, I don't, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me because ultimately in the end, God has this world in his hand. But in the short time, who's president does matter. And if people who are opposed to Trump being the president, but have, but love the gospel, I would say this, petition the DNC to bring someone in to preach the gospel. Petition, petition the DNC to bring a Christian in. Petition, petition the DNC to bring someone who loves the Lord in. Now, obviously, someone might say, well, the RNC brought in, there was some, I don't know, some, I don't know what this lady was, some pagan person or whatever they brought in fine political uh, a decision was made however she, they brought her in what it <laughs> maybe early in the morning four in the morning i'm not it wasn't four in the morning but they brought her in at a certain time that was pretty early very few people were watching in order matter of fact in order to know she was there you would probably have to watch some other youtube channel that would have it reported on her being there i don't even know her name what her religion is but to bring this brother in prime time just a just a little a short time before Trump goes in. As a matter of fact, after he finished, Trump's walk walks in. Everyone sees this, and you got to hear the gospel. And let me just say this: I don't care what your belief is, what party you're for. How this young brother ended it, spot on. If you believe that, come on, put your hands together and give our great God great glory.